fuck the place door. He's back. The legend. You know, I've always felt restricted in this chair, you know. I think I might as well change change scenery, sort of, you know. Much better. So today what i got for you guys is a top 50 albums of 2019. We've upgraded from 35 to 50, so a big improvement here. I didn't include um, EPs, like Earl Sweatshirt's Feet of Clay. That is not an album. I don't count that as an album. That's like seven tracks long. It's not an album. I thought it was absolutely phenomenal, though. Some of, um, probably his third best project he's ever released. But that is not going to be on this album of the year ranking. Um, e no EPs, no, um, mixtapes, no, um, no compilations. Get right into it. I'm going to skip through the first, bloody, the first, like, 40. One, because I don't have enough time. I only had, like, a couple weeks to work on this to, like, write everything down. And two, because it's bloody long. 50, Doja Cat, Hot Pink. 49, Arizona Baby by Kevin Abstract. 48, Prince Originals. 47, Miles Davis, Rubber Band. 46, West Side Gun, Hitler, West Hermes, 7. 45, Claro Immunity. Uh, 44, Avitar, Cows on Hourglass Pond. Billy Eilish, when we all fall asleep, where do we go? Malibu, Ken, self-titled. Mac, Homie, Wapcon, Jodge. Rico, Nasty, Anger, Management. Uh, Daniel Caesar, Case Study, 01. Uh, Yves Jarvis. The same, but by different means. Uboa, the ori ori or or uh, original My Depression. Full of Hell, Weeping Quiet. Danny Brown, you know what I'm saying? Little Sims, Grey Area. King is never lizard wizard, fishing for fishies. Benny the Butcher, the plugs I met. Ariana Grande, thank you, next. Weather Day, come in. Otoboki, Beaver, Itacoma, hits. King is in the lizard wizard, infest the rat's nest. Billy Woods, terror management. Stella Donnelly, beware of the dogs. Carly Rae Jepsen, dedicated. Angel, Angel, Angel Olsen, all mirrors. Lana Del Rey, Norman, fucking Rockwell. Anderson, Park Ventura, FK Twigs, Magdalene, Mike, Tears of Joy, Injury Reserve, self titled The Common is Coming, Trust in the Life Force of the Deep Mystery, Tropical Fuckstorm, Brain Drops, Matt Moss, Plastic Anniversary, Billy Woods and Kenny Siegel, Hiding Places, Clipping, There is this an Addiction to Blood, Swans, Leaving Meaning, Liturgy, Hack, and Matana, Roberts, Coin Coin, Chapter 4, Memphis. Now, on to the top 10, finally. At number 10, we have Show Me the Body, Dog Whistle. Show Me the Body, Dog Whistle, a great punk album. Sticks to many traditions of punk, but but it's still an amazing album. It's got the gritty, gritty instrumentals, the grimy vocals. It's <laughs> vocals are bloody brilliant. Um, and it was a great start off to the year. I absolutely love this album at the start of the year. I had it as my album of the year, uh, like the first first half probably. Obviously, there's been a lot of great albums to drop since then, but this was absolutely amazing. Number nine. Black Midi, Schlagenheim. Very creative album. The varying sounds and um, creative use of their vocals. The vocals. Um, it's hard to describe this album because every song is a different experience and a different sound. And it's like difficult to pinpoint a constant through every song. Obviously, this is a very creative album, very innovative album, and I hope to see them improve on that sound during um, the next decade and the uh, following years, but yeah, it's a good day. Showed great potential on this album and to release a top 10 album of the year um, as their debut is bloody amazing. Number eight, Freddie Gibbs and Madly, the dynamic, dynamic duo, the best duo of the decade with Bandana, a successor to Pinata and a bloody great successor. On Pinata, I felt like uh, Freddie Gibbs was not, I wouldn't say like fully carried, but um, it was more of a it was more of a Madlib, uh, Madlib showcase of how great his pr uh, production skills really are. Yeah, Freddie Gibbs. I just felt like Freddie Gibbs. He wasn't. It wasn't as good. He wasn't like matching the the like the production was here and Freddie Gibbs uh, rapping was about here. But with Bandana, I felt like Freddie Gibbs rapping was better than um, Madlib's production. Freddie's rapping is great. His storytelling has improved immensely with the song Fake Names, one of the best songs of the year. And even the production is, it's it, even though it's a little um, back step, it's still amazing. The song, um, what's the song I'm thinking of? Half Main, Half Cocaine. Amazing track. The switch, the switch between the trap beat, the half main, and the half cocaine, where it goes to full sample, hard, 
production and Freddie Gibbs just goes over it like it's bloody like he's bloody surfing. Improvements on all fronts for Freddie Gibbs, storytelling, lyricism, flow, or improvements um, since Pinata. And I am keen for the trilogy, for the greatest trilogy to ever hit hip hop. I'm very keen for that. And yeah, that's number eight. Number seven, Shoo Shoo Girl with a Basket of Fruit. Uh, this album is very, it's a very odd experience, you know. Uh, you won't get it on the first go. Some of the some of the tracks are like really weird. Like the first three tracks, the first one is like weirdly dance, weirdly danceable, you know. The second track is like um, like in like really intense. Like the vocals are really intense. And the third is like dark and disturbing, heavily based. Then the lyrics absolutely match this perfectly, um, and so do the vocals. Um, one of the lyrics that I some of my favorite lyrics of the year. Take a break. The pressure rips her apart. The baby duck inside you has died. Push it down, F word a duck. It's a bad time to be a duck. Very obscure. <coughs> this album is very out there. It won't be for yet for everybody, obviously. It's very avant-garde, very, very weird. But I do recommend it, checking it out, because it's a bloody phenomenal album from Shushu. Probably my personal favourite Shushu album, even though I haven't listened to all of their, their whole discography. This is a great way to start it off. It's a they really hit the mark with this one. Number six, Slauson Malone, A Quiet Farewell, 2016 to 2018. Some of those beautiful, some of the best plunder phonics slash post hop of the decade. I hope that term catches on, by the way. Post hop, like post rock and post punk, post hop, where it's purely sample based and it just sounds music to my ears. Production on this album is absolutely incredible. The samples that they use, they would have any flips to make it. Ooh, the soulful, beautiful beat, the soulful samples, oh, that just hit me in the heart. The way he uses these samples to create like a different atmosphere, it just amazes me. And even when there's a feature on the track, sometimes you won't even notice it because he uses the vocals as an, uh, like a sort of instrument and it just blends in perfectly with the production. Slauson Malone really knocked it out of the park with this one. And the production on this album is some of the best I've ever heard on a, on a hip hop album ever. That's including uh, Mad Billy. I think that's the best. I think that's personally the best produced hip hop album of all time. But and Pinato is up there. But uh, a Quiet Farewell definitely is definitely up there, like top five best produced hip hop albums ever. The samples are beautiful. The way he flips them are beautiful. The vocals even are beautiful. Number five, one of my favorite albums of the year, probably a top, like uh, top, one of my favorite albums of the year, Titanic Rising by Way Is Blood. Titanic Rising is an absolutely amazing experience when you first listen to it. Going on walks when you listen to it is absolutely perfect. Late in the night, in the afternoon, going for a walk, Andromeda comes on, you're in a bloody different world. And speaking of Andromeda, one of my favourite songs of the year, it's the feeling when you get, you just walk, walking, you got your earphones in, you're just walking, you're, you go to a different planet, it's like, like, you know when you stand up really quickly and your eyes go all fuzzy, it's like it's like that, but like in a, a better better com better concept, better way. But the vocals on this album are absolutely beautiful. The production on this album is e ethereal and uh, so atmospheric. And the mix between the beautiful production and the beautiful vocals, the atmospheric the atmospheric creates, it just culminates into one of my favorite albums of the year. Number four, JPEG Mafia, All My Heroes Are Cornballs. I wanted to review this album properly, but of course, I had uh, prelim exams, so I couldn't, I didn't have time to do, I could tell, uh, I didn't have time to do anything, any of that. I had to study, you know, get that work, get the work done. Other than that, All My Heroes Are Cornballs has proved to be JPEG Mafia, my personal favorite JPEG Mafia album. It's some of his best production, his best lyricism even, to make veteran and to improve that is just out of this world. I can't even believe that concept. But this album is absolutely incredible. I had it as a ten out of ten at one point, but obviously it grew off of me a bit. I think some of the some of the um some of the vocals and the the crooning, the auto tune crooning can come off as a bit like iffy. Uh for me personally, so it it got a bit grimy waifu. I don't know about that song, but this album is the highs are way higher than the lows on this album. And the highs on this album are some of the best hip-hop history. You know, Free the Frail, holy shit, what a song. 
Jesus, forgive me, I thought, holy shit, what a song. What a different cha what a change of direction it was from veteran. You know, he experimented with his voice all over this album. He's so hitting those high notes, and those high notes, even though he used auto-tune, that doesn't matter. He hit those high notes like bloody Ariana Grande. This album has got me really excited for JP Mafia's um, future, future works, future albums. And I, I'm willing to bet that he will drop one of the best hip hop albums of all time. He will drop, he will drop like a fucking, he will drop a mad villainy one day. Number three, Lingua Ignota, Caligula. Whew. First, if you want to listen to this album, you have to prepare yourself, you know. This album is not what, what you would expect. This album has been, it's been uh, classified with the, the phrase neoclassical dark wave, which I think is an amazing, <laughs> an amazing title to give a genre. It's incredibly confusing, but it, it definitely does sort of fit it. The production on this is very um, similar to classical music. The, the grand, the grand, the horns and the horns. It's absolutely beautiful. And then you get to the vocals and some of this is some of the best vocal performances of the year. Um, what's the song? Um, Butcher of the World. Butcher of the World is one of my favourite songs of the year. It goes from um, somber, very beautiful to bloody black metal vocals screaming on the floor, very primal. Similar to a 90s black metal, early 90s black metal. This album is absolutely phenomenal. The lyrics on this album are absolutely so dark and the themes on this album are so dark. It's about her getting in, um, like, uh, getting out of an um, abusive relationship and his hatred for the guy and even goes as far to identify herself with a serial killer who grew up um, believing that all men were trash men are dogs you know this album is so so grand so i can't even begin to describe the experience i had with this album when i first listened to it i didn't expect to be ear raped in the first listen i was going for a bloody walk and i was just hoping no one asked me what i'm listening to but obviously no one did because no one wants to talk to me this album is absolutely insane it's an it's it's an absolute experience i do recommend you um listening to it but prepare yourselves for a, for an intense experience. You may cry, you may you may have night terrors. This album is absolutely phenomenal. It's one of my favorite albums of the year. That's why it's in my top three. It's a beautiful album and a disgusting one too. Number two, it's a toss up between my favorite albums of the year. Uh, Charlie XEX, Charlie. This has grown on me so much since it first came out. When it first came out, I didn't really like it. Because, you know, I wasn't really a big pop guy early in the year, you know. Pop, ooh, ah, oh, me, man, me, but pop, pop, pop bad. My God, has it grown on me recently? I've gone through a massive pop phase, you know, Carly Rae Jepsen, the Lord, Lana Del Rey, all of them. And this has just stood out so much for me. It's got um the PC Music production, obviously, uh, with uh, Sophie and Sophie in them. And it's just some of the best experimental pop of the decade. It's... I don't want to spoil anything, but it's definitely up there with some of the best pop albums of the decade. Every track is a whole different experience. This album is, is amazing. It has so many different sides to it. It's either very bass heavy, very danceable, like 1999, or very glitch pop, like 2099, and um, Click and Shake It. Uh, some of my favourite um, songs of the year uh, came out on this album, White Mercedes. is absolutely beautiful when the hook comes in. The chorus comes in. It's it's just it takes you out of this world. It's just absolutely phenomenal. The song. I really hope that Charlie uh, keeps going in this direction in the future. I hope she keeps going. It's it's just been an absolute crazy experience for me. Every listen, it gets better, and it's really it really was a toss up between the top two albums of the year. But I just like the number one a little bit more. And speaking of the number one, I think we all know what it is. It hasn't appeared yet. Um. You know, so so one of the, the pink, the pink guy, the pink, the pink album. You know, with the gray, the gray face. You know, Tyler the Creator, Igor. This Igor was an absolute experience for me personally. It's one of those experiences that I will never forget. I was in English class, and um, it came out during that period, and I caught it. I didn't call, it, but I went. I asked the teacher to go to the toilet so I could listen to it. Eagle's theme came on. I was like. Okay, and then Earthquake came on. I was like, holy shit, 
uh, Playboy Cardi is phenomenal on this album, and I think him when I was fucking dancing, you know. Every track just got better and better and better for me. New Magic Wand, one of my personal favourite songs of the year, and I've said this for like every every album that I've mentioned uh, today, but New New Magic Wand is one of, probably one of the best songs of the year, and Gone Gone Thank You is one of Tyler's best songs ever. Production is some of the best that Tyler's ever done. You know, the production on the song was like Gone Gone Thank You with New Magic Wand and A Boy Is A Gun is absolutely phenomenal. It's out of this world um, what Tyler has done with this album. For the themes of this album, it's a, it's a breakup album between um, two people. And Tyler has unrequited relationship, has unrequited love for this person. And so that doesn't work and then it's split up. Gone Gone uh, Thank You. Yeah, it just describes it in the, some of the most perf the perfect way possible. My dog is barking, I don't know why. Hey! Shut up! A bitch. Back to it. Tyler the Creator, Eagle, Album of the Year. This. The way he describes the process of breaking up with people and dealing with it, it is absolutely amazing. Probably the best breakup album of the decade for me personally. This album, this album definitely holds a very special, special meaning in my heart because of the experience I had with it. Quality-wise, it's definitely the best album of the year. It's got great production, great lyrics, uh, great vocal use even. And yeah, that's it. So that's it for the 2019 album of the year rankings. I'm finally getting back into this. You know, it says on my banner, oh, uh, 20, uh, every, every uh, new, ep new video every week. <clears throat> that was a lie. I'm hoping to get back into it um, during the holidays. I'm going to try upload every week. I'm going to get an album of the decade uh, video out very soon. Thoughts on 2019 music and expectations for the ne uh, next year and even for the next decade. And I might might do a vlog, I don't know, um, to to some place. Keen to get that all figured out. I'm keen to get that all planned out. And I hope you guys enjoyed. I definitely enjoyed making this. Um, it's much more freeing standing up than sitting down. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, comment your personal favorite album of the year. Uh, your favorite songs of the year, because I did have an opportunity to do a favorite songs of the year um, list. Um, yeah, your favorite albums, favorite songs of the year, comment them down below. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and yeah, that's been me. See ya.